Hello, this video, I'm going to explain how decision trees can be used to classify um, one, two or more different classes in a data set. Um, this is going to be an introductory video on implementing decision trees in R, and we will be using two packages. The first package that we are going to be using is called R part. And the next package that we're going to be using is R part dot plot. So our part is going to be helping us uh, implement decision tree algorithm. And our part plot is going to help us visualize the decision trees. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'll be on this first video, I will be working on a familiar data set. We worked on this data set before and it is a Titanic data set where we keep passenger information and their survival outcomes, whether they survive or not, depending on their property. So let's get uh, first import the data. Data is going to be in CSV format. And therefore we have to use this first option from text. And I keep my data here um, and then I hit open. Uh, this is the preview format. As you can see, um, it is separated by commas here. And then the data frame up is going to look like this. So I'm happy with that. And I will keep the name as Titanic underscore data. And I'll hit import. Okay, so in this data set, as a reminder, we do have the class of our um, passengers information. First class, second class, third class. I think we have the fourth one as well. And with um, the age, age category, um, and then their sex, and the final dependent variable is going to be this one, the survived column. It's going to include yeses and noes. So we are hoping that our decision tree algorithm is going to show us a really good path into predicting whether these passengers have survived or not. Okay. Um, the reason that we use a seed value here uh, before we start by using set that seed function is because uh, whenever we run this code again, we would like to keep the same randomly generated numbers in order um, so that you know, whenever we run it several times ahead of uh, the code, uh, it is going to give us the, the repeatability feature of this code. I'm not sure whether this is clear, but uh, basically this set that seed is going to give us the random numbers generated in order again and again and again so that uh, next time you, you run this code, you would not see any surprises, okay? The reason that we use it is because we, we, uh, we, we select our train and taste test data based on randomly generated numbers, right? Um, and then we want these randomly generated numbers to generate themselves in the same order next time we run it, okay? That's why we use the seed value. So this number inside it is just irrelevant. You can use any number you want. And for the sake of simplicity, I used one, two, three, four. All right, let's get started. Um, we imported the data under the name of Titanic underscore data. We set our seed value to one, two, three, four. Now let's split the data into train and tests by running, uh, executing these codes in line seven, eight, and nine. Um, so what this does is um, it's, it generates, um, you know, it's it's seventy percent probability it generates um, one, and thirty percent probability generates random number two, right? And the random number generated one is going to indicate that this specific row is going to be a tree in the train data set, and the random number two is going to be indicating that that specific row is going to be gener is going to be included in the test data set. Okay, and we do say replace equals to true. This is going to do the selection with replacement. So you might want to see same rows popping up in your train and test data more than once. Okay, and because we said so. All right, so we generated our train data and test data. In our train data, we do have um, uh, 1,579 observations. I think we haven't run the test yet because it's been generated yet now let's generate that too and in the test data we do have 622 observations so roughly it is 30 percent and 70 percent all right so at this point we are actually ready to put together our decision tree algorithm so we will have to install 
um, our part package. So I already installed it. If you have not installed it, please um, go ahead and execute line 13 and pause the video, install this, uh, and then come back. All right, after you come back, make sure that you run line 15 to actually load this uh, already installed library into R, okay? Let me run this. Okay, this is just telling R that, hey, we wanna use this library, please make the functions under this library ready for, for my use. And if you would like to call for help or you wanna just take a quick glance into what kind of functions and features that this R part of library offers, you can definitely do it here. One important to realize here is the method, method feature. So if your method feature is class, then, um, this R part library understands that you actually would like to run a classification tree. All right, that's very important. And if your method feature is ANOA, then the uh, R part understands that you would like to run a decision tree, but your dependent variable is just a continuous number, like a regress regression variable that you run, like a value that you would like to predict, okay? So class indicates that you would like to do uh, um, a classification. You would like to classify your outcomes. And another means that you are actually doing there some sort of regression but using decision trees, all right? That's important uh, feature to be aware of, all right? So we use the R part function, nothing is different, okay? R part function, and then we open the parentheses and we type our formula. Remember, we are trying to predict whether a person um, belongs to a survive category, yes and no, or or that uh, that person, well, simply yes or no, right? So it, a person might have been survived or that person just uh, may not have survived. So, um, and that depends on their class, their age and their sex information. Okay, so we represented that on the right side of the tilde, and then on the left side, we do have the survive column. Um, and the data that we are going to be using is the train data because we would like to train the model, we would like to get the right parameters of the decision trees, um, what kind of parameters that decision trees is fitting. Uh, it has the size of the tree, it, it has uh, the number of branches and leaves that you know, it controls. I'm not going to go into details of those, but um, make sure that you know, those you, you are aware of the fact that those are the parameters that are being um, optimized here, okay? Uh, and then as I said, method is class because this is going to indicate that uh, under the survive column, we do have two different outcomes, okay? Let's run this. Um, and what this does is it is going to create a decision tree object here. So you can actually take a look at this object or you can display it here on the console. And it tells you that uh, this is a decision tree. It has 1,579 observations. Um, it has a root node, and these are the percentages of yes and no category. Uh, sorry, no and yes category. Um, and this is the leaf node coming out of root one, root, uh, and then here um, after root three, we do have other child nodes, so on and so forth. Um, this is not really an easy way to look at decision trees. Yeah, we are all aware of that. Um, these bunch of numbers may not really tell us uh, the information that we are after. Therefore, we do have a nice visualization package for decision trees and it's called R part fly. And at this point, I need you to go ahead and execute um, at this line, the line below that. Here it is, install that packages inside in quotation on part that plot. Um, make sure that you install this package, pause the video, and come back and load the package by calling library our part that plot. Okay, so after you've got your uh, decision tree object, yeah, all you have to do is to type our part that plot in parentheses, the, the name of the object, the decision tree that you just created, and execute that. Okay. The way that you execute it again is a reminder, if you're using a Mac, it is command and return. If you're using a PC, it should be control and enter. Okay, so I'd like to zoom into this graph to tell you what's going on. Um, and 